Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto. And one of the more common categories of questions that I tend to get, especially on baking recipes, are about psyllium husks. People will ask, are psyllium husks and psyllium husk powder the same thing? Can I just grind up psyllium husks to make my own psyllium husk powder? Why do I need to use psyllium husks? Psyllium husks and psyllium husk powder are types of fiber. In terms of carbs, very, very low. Whole psyllium husk, one net gram of carbs in two tablespoons. Psyllium husk powder, on the other hand, has one net gram of carbs in a teaspoon. And we'll see why that is a little bit later on as we start doing some experiments. But what are the implications in baking? That is what we're gonna look at in this episode of the Keto Test Kitchen. When you're baking, psyllium husk performs a couple of different functions, and it performs those different functions differently depending on whether you're using husks or powder, as you'll see later on in this video. Both of them will retain some moisture. It'll give some added density and the added moisture to whatever you're making. So if you've ever had a really dry keto or gluten-free type of bun or bread that just sort of crumbles, it's not holding on to the moisture. Additionally, and this is especially true with the powder, you get this sort of stickiness, this almost gluten type effect. It becomes very elastic. And this can help out with the chew when that's something that you're trying to achieve. Now, the cool thing is it does this without adding some of that sliminess that you can get when you use too much xanthan gum or without the gluten, if you've got a gluten sensitivity, that comes with using vital wheat gluten. Now, for those of you who just like following recipes on cooking videos, this may not be up your alley, but if you enjoy baking and understanding how ingredients work, that's what we're gonna get into as we look at the weight by volume, as we look at the moisture holding properties, and we look at what happens when we do a little bit of baking in terms of taste, texture, and as can sometimes be the case with psyllium husk powder, color. So we're gonna start with the pre-baking stuff. For our first comparison, we'll look at the differences between weight by volume. So I will measure out one tablespoon of whole psyllium husks versus one tablespoon of psyllium husk powder, and then I will grind up some husks in a spice grinder and see what that weighs. So first, one tablespoon of whole psyllium husks, six grams. Next, one tablespoon of psyllium husk powder, 10 grams. Then I'll take two tablespoons of whole psyllium husk because I know that the volume is gonna decrease once I run it through the spice grinder. And we'll grind this up into powder. Our two tablespoons of husks reduced down to one tablespoon of powder plus a little bit extra. And at nine grams, it's coming in awfully close to the prepackaged powder. But we still need to do a couple more tests before we can determine if you can just buy whole husks and grind them instead of having two separate bags, powder and husks, in your pantry. For the next experiment, I am gonna test the moisture absorbency of each of my three varieties of psyllium husk. In each of these, I have one quarter cup of water and I will be adding one teaspoon of psyllium husk. First, whole psyllium husks. In the center, the psyllium husks that we ground. And on the right, the prepackaged psyllium husk powder. I'll give each one of these a little whisk. I can already tell that of the three, the psyllium husk powder is the one that seems to want to clump the most. And after just one minute, the regular psyllium husk still kind of just seems like water with psyllium husk. The ground is kind of thickening up almost like a gelatin, like if I were proofing gelatin. Pretty slimy feeling texture as well. And lastly, the powder. Whoa, this stuff is thick. It is gooey. 
Look at that. This thing is forming a, a solid mass here already. We'll let them sit for another 15 minutes and check back in on them. It has been 15 minutes. Our psyllium musk. I would probably compare this texture to, I don't know, cream of wheat or something. I'm not sure. It's somewhat slick, not terribly gritty. Next are ground psyllium husks. Now this has got sort of a stickiness to it. It kind of wants to stick to my finger. You can see that it does kind of cling to itself. I would say that it doesn't feel as slick as the whole psyllium husks. Approximately the same sort of grittiness, just very mild. And finally, we have our whole psyllium husk powder. This stuff is dense. This is really, really clinging together. I mean, it's almost rubbery. It's like a, it's like liquid cement. See how this stuff just pulls? Yeah, this is, a, this is definitely some slime right here. And again, there's just that slightest little bit of grit. I would say the grit level really feels comparable across the board here, with the whole psyllium husks having definitely the slickest of the textures. And then gradually, as we work our way across, they get a little bit more gooey. So that's definitely going to have some ramifications when it comes to baking. For the baking experiment, I'm going to be using a chaffle batter, but instead of cooking it in a Dash mini waffle maker, I'm going to cook it in the Dash griddle. This is what I use when I do my McGriddle recipe, which I'll link to right up here. That uses psyllium husk powder as well, and... Up until recently, every batch had turned out really nicely, but the most recent batch I did turned out purple. And that was still using the Now brand psyllium husk powder. I haven't tried Anthony's yet. So for each one of these chaffle chan cake things, I will be using a half a recipe. So one quarter cup of mozzarella, half a beaten egg, and I will use, it might be too much, but I'm gonna try one teaspoon of each of the psyllium husks. I sense that the one that uses the psyllium husk powder is probably gonna come out pretty dense. I don't even know what it's gonna turn out like, but I would rather use a little too much to really sort of amplify their baking properties so that we can see how they behave. Also to try and get as consistent results as possible, I will be grinding up the cheese and the powder together in my little food processor before adding the egg. I find I get a far more uniform texture that way. And that's really the goal here. I wanna make sure that it's apples to apples when we're looking at taste and texture. I'll show you the process for the baseline recipe with the food processor. I won't show it to you on each batch though. That's kind of redundant. Just trust me that I'm doing it. We have one quarter cup mozzarella and one teaspoon almond flour. This is my baseline, boring, non psyllium husk chaffle. And we'll process this until it looks like meal. It seems like usually about eight pulses is the magic number. To this we'll add our one half beaten egg and mix that. Then I'll make some batter with my whole psyllium husks and we'll put these in a head-to-head -head against each other. So on the left, we will do the baseline version. And on the right, the whole psyllium husk recipe. All right, they've been cooking for about four minutes. Our base spread out, looking a lot more eggy on top. I'm gonna move this to a cooling rack. Our psyllium husk, definitely more dense. It didn't spread out. 
This looks kind of interesting. Next, we have the ground psyllium husks that we did in the spice grinder. Pretty thick again. And then we have the psyllium husk powder. This is definitely the darkest of the batches. And it has totally absorbed all the egg. I think this might even start falling apart on us. It has been about four minutes, so let's pop these guys out. Again, some pretty good lift on the ground psyllium husks. And the psyllium husk powder, this thing looks more like a sausage. All right, off to a cooling rack with this. So first, let's compare the texture. Here's the base with just the almond flour. Somewhat stiff, a lot of the cheese kind of sunk to the bottom here. And not an especially elastic tear. The whole psyllium husks. Well, this definitely has got some more pliability to it. It bends a bit. The tear seems a little bit more bread-like. The ground psyllium husks. This seems to have held on to more moisture. It's uh, definitely, definitely more pliable. Oh yeah, the pull apart there was almost a little bit gooey. I hope that's gooey cheese. And finally, we have the psyllium husk sausage patty looking thing. All right, now this, it's tearing on the top still seems a little dough-like in the center. Yeah, I think this held on to an awful lot of moisture. This could be a little bit gooey. Now the taste test. First, I have my generic almond flour chaffaly thing. It's good. It kind of reminds me of like fathead crackers. I'll throw a slice of roast beef between a couple of these. Then we have our whole psyllium husks. Definitely more dense. And interestingly, it kind of negates the flavor of both the egg and the cheese. There's almost a tiny little bit of rubbery feel. Not a horrible amount, but it's noticeable. You feel it on your teeth if you've ever bitten into something that's rubber there's that little bit of rubbery sensation from it. I'm not getting any gritty sensation that some people complain about with psyllium husks, but it definitely seems to lessen, if not negate, the cheese and egg flavor. Then we have our home ground psyllium husk powdery stuff. So far, this is the most moist out of the ones that I've tried. It doesn't have that rubbery texture as much, it kind of reminds me of a heavier naan. I think if you put some sort of a leavening agent in with this to get a little bit more puff and you spread it out, you're halfway there to a decent naan recipe. And finally, we have our psyllium husk powder. This is very dense. This is really what gives the density to my McGriddle recipe. That gives it that real chew. This is also totally what gives my tortilla recipes their chew. It is definitely a binder. It really holds things together and gives it that sort of elastic-y sort of tension to it when you're chewing. Now, interestingly, this batch, using the same psyllium husk powder that I used on my last batch of tortillas, did not turn purple. My last batch of tortillas did turn purple. I know that using baking powder with aluminum in it can cause a reaction with psyllium husk powder and cause it to turn purple, but in my tortilla recipe, there's no baking powder. And I've been following the exact same recipe over and over and over again. So I don't know what the little X factor is, the lurking variable that's causing my psyllium husk recipes to turn out purple from time to time. I hope I can figure that out. So what are the takeaways from all of this? Well, there is definitely a difference between whole psyllium husk, ground psyllium husk, and psyllium husk powder. I think that ground psyllium husks and psyllium husk powder are close enough that you could probably just buy whole psyllium husk, 
grind it yourself, and use that in place of psyllium husk powder. Home ground psyllium husks are also going to deliver a lighter colored result. Right here is the ground psyllium husks. And here is the psyllium husk powder. If you're looking for some real density and chew, you're going to want to go with the psyllium husk powder or potentially the ground psyllium. If you're looking for something with a little bit more lift, a little bit more hardiness, and something that might negate some egginess flavor, then whole psyllium husk is probably the ticket. I know I've got a number of viewers who love experimenting in the kitchen. If you are one of those people and you're playing around with psyllium husks or psyllium husk powder and you make some sort of discovery that you think could benefit us all, please put it down in the comments. At some point, I will combine them all and put them in a pinned comment with sort of a collection of advice on psyllium husks. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, tap that bell and select all notifications. And lastly, if you want to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what membership options are all about. Thanks for watching.